Hello and welcome to the Argos Report Writer Training. My name is Anthony and I'll be leading the training today. The intended audience for this training is the Argos Report Writer. The prerequisite to this training is the Argos Report Viewer Training or a basic understanding of the Argos product. The goal of this training is to demonstrate the functionalities available to the Report Writer and how to create each of the four types of reports available in Argos. We will be covering the following objectives in this training. We will be doing an overview of what the Report Writer role is, the difference between shared and private reports, how to create each type of report, how to add filters, sorts, and expressions to a report, and how to add objects to the Library of Objects tool. First, we are going to provide an overview of what a report writer does. To create our reports, there are three things that we will need. A data block form, the report query, and a report format. As a report writer, we can use the information coming from the data block and create the report format for the report viewers to use. So, as a report writer, we are dependent on the information coming from the data block to create our reports. For example, here we have created a report from a data block returning students that have an outstanding balance and have a past due balance on their account. We like this report format and we want to return all students that have an outstanding balance even if they are not past due. For this, we would need a completely separate data block because we are accessing a broader population. Another example would be if we wanted to add a new data element to the report, such as a phone number. Again, we would require an entirely new data block, this time because the data elements have changed. Even though we are working with the same population, we would still need a modified query for the new data element, in this case, the student's phone number. This ultimately comes down to communication. Discussion will be necessary between the three parties that will be involved in the report creation process. This will ensure that the created report contains all of the required data elements. When creating a report, we can have the data block designer create a data block that is multifunctional. It can be difficult to go back and modify a data block after it has been created. Next, we will discuss the difference between shared and private reports. Let's get started and launch Argos to the eLauncher webpage. I will be logging in as a report writer. On my screen, you can see my user role in the bottom right-hand corner of the Argos client. I am currently logged in as a user with the report writer role. I can see the five reports underneath the address information data block. Please note that this report has an I superimposed over the icon. This indicates it's a private report and can only be seen by the person who made the report private. Only roles that can edit a report are able to make reports private. A good use for a private report is to make a report private while you, the report writer, are developing the report. When the report is ready to go into production, change the setting of the security to share it so that everyone can see it. The next concept I want to go over is informational only. As a report writer, you cannot implement it but I do want you to be aware of it. Let's say you have a report that is wanted by different people in different departments, and they all want pretty much the same information. The information is not sensitive in nature, so a report is created for everyone to use. Later, one group needs to add a piece of information, and that piece of information is sensitive in nature. This could be something like a social security number, a disability indicator, or an indicator that someone is getting financial aid. This information should only be viewed by users with the proper permissions.
The data block designer role has the ability to restrict access to a piece of data based on who runs the report. Let's say the last name data is private information. The data block designer will grant access to the last name field only to people in human resources. When the report is run by a member of human resources, the report will include information under the last name field. When the report is run by anyone outside of human resources department, it will be blank. Now we will be creating each of the different reports. We will create a new report by highlighting the data block, and clicking the new button under the report writer actions. This pop-up creates a new report or dashboard window. Here we will give the report a name, set the permissions to either shared or private, give the report a description, or select what type of report it will be. While the first item in this list is a dashboard, this selection will just create a new shortcut to the dashboard that was created by the data block designer. We are going to focus on the other four. They are CSV, Extract, Banded, and Crosstab reports. Okay, let's create a comma delimited or CSV report. First, we'll give this report a name. We'll set the permissions to private while we work on it. And also add a description. The best practice is to fill this in as descriptively as possible. After we've created a number of different reports, we'll need to be able to differentiate them. Remember that the report viewers are the ones who need to know what the report does, so a good description can save a lot of time here. We'll choose the CSV type and click Create. This automatically takes us to the Edit Report window. You can see that we have six tabs across the top that will allow us to make modifications. The General tab, Filters, Sorts, Refresh, API, and Saved Execution States. We'll talk about filters and sorts after we create the report. The Refresh tab allows you to refresh variables within the data block. The API tab is for administrators to set up API calls. And the Saved Execution States tab is used for managing saved states. If we want to find out more information about the different topics in these tabs, we can press the F1 to launch our in-product help for this topic. At any time you are working in Argos, you could press F1 to launch the in-product help article which relates to your location in Argos. Now we click on the Design button in the General tab. Here is the design window for the CSV report. Notice that we have the title of the report at the top of the design window. And remember, we are creating a CSV report which is a flat text file. So the design work can be minimal. First, we'll select the fields for our report which are listed in the left pane. These are the database fields returned from the data block query. If we need a field that isn't in this list, we will need to work with our data block designer to get it added. We can select the fields for our reports in two ways. One is by double clicking the field to add it. We can also use the control and shift keys to select multiple fields and then use the arrow keys to move them over. The double arrow will move all the fields over and to remove a field, we simply select the field and click the blue X. For this example, I'm going to add the last name field, first name, street one, city, state, and zip. To reorder the columns within the report, 
you can use the blue up and down arrows. And to rename a field heading, we'll click on the ABI beam icon. When I rename a column header, I can use spaces in the name. Note that we're just renaming the column header and not the actual field name. So for this example, I've just renamed street one as street. So far, we have just added fields to our CSV report, but we can also add expressions by clicking on this E equals MC squared button. This will bring up the expression builder, which will help us build our expression. Here at the bottom, we have three icons. The FN icon is a list of the available functions. The ABC icon is a list of available user-defined variables. And the signal icon is a list of available dataset fields. For a simple demonstration, we will add an expression returning the report date. I can either look through the all category of all available functions or just the subset. I know I want the report date, so I'll choose the date and time category. And these are all the available date and time functions. As I click on each function, description of the function is displayed below. I'll choose the now function to return the current date and time. And in my expression builder, there is just a now function for my report date and my expression is complete. A field name dialog box will pop up and I'll give it a name. And I'm back in the edit CSV report window. On the bottom right hand side pane, we have a few more options for our CSV report. Write column header. This option is checked by default and it will add column headers as the first row of your CSV report. The headers will be the name of the data field as seen on the right hand side pane. Include byte order mark. Some programs, such as Microsoft Excel, require a byte order mark in the file to render extended ASCII characters correctly. You should check this box if there may be foreign characters in the data and you will be opening the CSV file in such a program. Next we have suppress printing of the repeated lines. This option removes duplicate lines from the report. The duplicates will only be removed if they are sequential. Any duplicates that appear further down the report will not be suppressed. To remove all duplicates from the report, make sure to sort the records first so that the duplicates will be grouped together. We have append blank line to the end of the report. This will add a blank line to the end of the report if desired. And lastly, the separator, which you enter the character you wish to use as a field separator. Standard CSV reports use a comma, which is the default. And for now, we'll keep the defaults. We'll execute the report and see how it looks. Here is our CSV report with the columns that we selected. We can see that the columns are renamed and the date column is the farthest to the right. Before I close out, notice that we have addresses from a variety of different states. The records are being sorted by last name and then first name. If you want to narrow our results, we can filter by a field or sort by a field in the report. Filters and sorts are part of editing a report. Once activated, they can only be deactivated by a report writer role or above. To activate a filter or sort, check the activate box. Something that should be noticed 
is that the filters set up in the report filter tab run after all the filters and conditions coming from the data block report query. So if used, the filter tab is essentially tacking on additional conditions to the existing data block. In the case of larger record sets, this will add additional processing time. However, sorts set up in the report sort tab will completely bypass any sort order defined in the data block and will use the report sort order instead. First, we're going to add a filter to our report. Let's use the example of Pennsylvania that we used in, in the viewer training. To add a filter, first we need to activate additional filtering, checking the checkbox. We can either double click, drag and drop, or use the blue transfer arrow to choose the field we want to filter on. In this case, we will choose the state field and move it to the filter pane. Then we'll type in the filter. Since we only want Pennsylvania, we'll add in a space, an equal sign, another space, a single quote, PA, and another single quote. We could type that out for each new state, but a much easier way of doing this is through the use of SQL functions. If you are familiar with SQL, many SQL functions will work here, but we'll be using the in function to include all our user input. Now we will work with the sort tab. We activate sorting by clicking the override box. We want to sort by state and then by city. Now we'll see how this report turned out. Notice here that we only have addresses for the states that we have just entered. And our report is sorted by the state and then by the city. States that aren't showing up aren't just part of the records that we're using. If we set up our records properly the first time, changes to the records set later will show up when the report is run. Next, we'll create an extract report. An extract report is a flat text report. It's similar to a CSV report, which is designed to meet predefined output specifications. It can also create common delimited outputs that is more complex than the CSV file. It can also create fixed width and XML files. We are going to create an extract report that will output in a fixed width format. We'll start by creating a new report. Again, we'll give it a name. We'll set it to private while we work on it. And we'll choose the extract report text icon. It brings us into the edit report window where we can add filters and sorts. We can also access the design area by clicking the design button under the general tab. And it will take us to the extract report design window. Notice that we have the name of the report at the top of the design window. And also, this design has three sections, the report structure, configure report, and data sets. I want to talk about the data sets region first. The data set region contains SQL queries that can return data for the reports. The Argos data main data set 
contains the data selected by the report query in the Argos data block. Notice these are the same fields that we had available in the CSV report. The other datasets contain the results of other queries in the dashboard. We can use these as part of our report as well. The middle, the middle area is where we configure the report. We start by configuring the report settings. We can create a fixed width report, a delimited report, or an XML report. If we select delimited, First notice that Argos will warn the users that you will lose all configuration for right now. Click yes to continue. In a delimited extract report, notice there is a field called delimiter. The delimiter is a field used to separate data, most commonly by using the comma as a delimiter, but in some cases a tab can be used as a delimiter. The icon that has two arrows pointing opposite from each other, we'll insert a tab in the delimiter. For this extract report example, we're going to choose the fixed width report and keep the defaults. To the left is the report structure area. Here we can add sections to the report. The detail record is the most important section within a report because it contains the record information being returned from the data source. One detail section contains the information for one record, and it will repeat for each record return for the report. The report structure area is also where we will add a section for the comments object as we saw on the report viewer training. If you would like more information on the report formats, check out our in-product documentation. First, we will be adding a title section. In the middle configuration area, we can configure the section properties. Note that we can set this section, conditional print, to print conditionally by creating an expression. The fields tab is where we add in the fields we want to include in the title section. We can add a dataset field, expression field, Easy expressions, which allow us to add more commonly used expressions, constants, and variables. We're going to add in a couple of constants into our title section. The first constant is going to be our school's name. So we'll rename this constant to school. Next, we set the width to 45. And the width needs to be wide enough for any school name. If we were designing this report to send to the government, we need to follow specific specifications. Next, we are going to set the value. The value will be set to Evisions University. And notice as I type in the value, the field width automatically adjusts to the number of characters. The reason it does this is that it's a constant. We can reset the field width to 45 after we're done typing the value. We're going to add in another constant, and we'll name this field contact email. And we'll type in an email address and set the width. Next, we want an expression that generates today's date. To do this, we will add an expression field. We'll name the field report run date. We'll change the width to 10. And we can change the width here first because it's an expression and not a constant. Now I'll create an expression to retrieve today's date by clicking on the ellipses to bring up the expression builder. Just like in my CSV report, I'll go into my function button. Find and select the now function and click OK twice to get back to the report builder. To make sure the date displays the way we want it, 
we can apply a formatting mask. Because the width is 10 characters, we want a format that returns no more than 10 characters. Notice that the format month, month, day, day, year, 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 year has 10 characters. This is the format that we want. To select it, we need to double click it. This will generate a date that is 10 characters wide, which is the width of our field. Next, we are going to create the comments row that we saw in the report viewer training. We are going to add a child section because we want this section to follow the title. We are going to rename this section to comments and set the parent to be the title section. Next, we add a variable to our fields tab. We can now select the comments variable. We'll set the width to 100. Now any comments that are typed into the comments box will be included in the report. Next we are going to move to our detail section. We will click the blue plus button symbol. Since I already have a detail section, when I click the blue plus button it will create another detail section. What I need to do is modify my detail section to be the title section. Notice you can copy and paste your fields among different bands. I'll go ahead and delete the detail section that I just created. I'll change the comments section to the title. And now clear out what I've just done. I'll also go ahead and rename these fields. We can rename this section under Section Properties tab and also change the associated data set. But for now, we're just going to accept the defaults. Let's go to the Fields tab and add in our fields. Here we can double click data set fields from the right or we can click and drag them over. Let's use the Argos main data set. We want to include ID, last name, first name, state, city, and zip. Now we'll click on each field and configure the width based on our report specification requirements. Remember that the width of the fields defines the number of characters that would be displayed. So if someone's last name is longer than 25 characters, then the name will be truncated. We'll change the following field widths. ID to be 15, last name will be 25, First name is 15, state, four characters, city, 35, and zip, 10. Now our report is complete. Let's see how it looks. We have a test button on our toolbar that allows us to preview the report without having to leave the design window. The parameter entry window pops up, and we can't test the query without populating the variables. So we'll fill in the required variables for the date, entity type, and address type, as well as something to test out the comments section. Note at the bottom left of the screen, there is a control that allows us to choose how many records we want returned. Setting it to zero returns all records. While running a test report, we don't need to return all the records. We just need enough 
to return so that we can check the design of our report. So we'll return 100 records, which will be enough for a preview. We'll go ahead and click OK. And here is our report. We can see the title section with eVisions University, the contact email, and the run date. The next line has our comment, and below that we can see all the detail lines with each column having a fixed width. Okay, before we get started creating a banded report, let's go over some basic concepts. It's called a banded report because the data is arranged in bands. It is similar to the extract report, except in an extract report, the data is arranged in sections. There is a great deal of similarity between the two different report styles, but they do work differently. And knowing how bands work is crucial to being able to build banded reports. The first band we're going to talk about is the detail band. The detail band is the most important band within a report because it contains the record information being returned from the data source. One detail band contains the information for one record, and the detail band repeats for each record to the end of the report. While the rest of the bands we are going to talk about are optional, a report must have a detail band. The first optional band is the page header band. The page header prints at the top of each page. You can also have a page footer brand that prints at the bottom of each page. The next band is a title band, which prints only on the first page. And just like we have a title band that will only print on the first page, we have a summary band that prints only on the last page. We also have column header bands, which print at the top of every page. And the next band is a grouping band. There is a group header that defines the beginning of a band and a group footer that defines the end of a band. Grouping bands group detail records based on a definition. And the header band is required while the footer band is optional. The next band is a child band, which always print after its parents band. We have a child band here following a group header that contains column labels. And it is difficult to see, but we also have a child band following after the group footer. In this case, the child band does not contain any data. It is just being used as a spacer to separate the group footer from the following group header. The in-product documentation covers the definitions for all bands if you want to review this information later. Next, we are going to create a banded report that looks like this, and we'll create it in stages. It should look something similar like this. And you can see the different types of bands that are being displayed here. Now before I close the banded report design window, I would like to point out the design DPI dropdown at the bottom of the window. This option allows you to specify the DPI that the report was designed in. The report will then scale appropriately when viewed on systems with different DPI settings. You may need to specify a DPI setting here for reports that were created in earlier versions of Argos in order for these reports to scale correctly. New reports are automatically set to 96 DPI when created. To create a banded report, we will start in the same way we have with all the other reports. We'll give it a name. choose the banded report icon and click create. 
We can add filters and sorts to a banded report just like we could with the CSV and extract reports. We will sort by last name. Sorry. We'll start by state first because we want to see the records in order by state, then by city, last name, and then first name. We'll click on the general tab and the design button, which takes us to the banded report wizard that will help us create the report. The banded report wizard has two tabs, report types and report styles. We have different types of templates, and as we select them, you can see the preview populate on the right-hand side. We have the list report, tabular style, a blank report, a form style, and mailing labels. If we have a specific template, it can be selected from the library of objects. The library of objects is a collection of different object types you can create and use again in your reports. When running the banded report wizard, we can select templates and or styles from the library of objects. A template is a pre-built report which contains images or preset fonts. A style is a set of colors and fonts. We'll go back using the standard type selection button. We'll select list report and click next in the bottom right hand corner of the window. The far left hand pane of the window shows the available fields from the data block. Notice these are the same fields available in all other reports. Select and move the fields by double clicking them. We'll choose last name, first name, city, state and zip and we'll click next notice that the banded report resizes the fields for us as we add them after we get out of the report wizard we can still add fields so don't worry if you forget a field here this window allows you to choose some of the default bands Bands can be added or removed inside the editor as well. We can choose to format our labels and data fields here. For now, we will add a page footer band to hold our page number. And on the page settings tab, we could change our report title. The page settings like size, margins, Orientation and the number of columns can all be modified here as well. And we'll go ahead and click finish. Here is our basic report. We'll discuss the toolbars throughout the training as we use the objects. This is the basic report produced by the report wizard. Before we start, let's see what the report looks like. This is our search form from the data block. I filled in the required search variables, and as you can see, this is a very plain report, but a good starting point. Before we get started, let's go over the banded report interface. The report name appears at the top of the window, and here on the left-hand pane is the structure pane. This shows all the bands in the report and every object that is placed in the bands. As we add content to the banded report, you'll notice the structure pane be filled with bands and objects. We will use this throughout the banded report creation. First, we will add the date to our page header. For that, we need a system variable. To create a system variable, add, click on the sys icon here. When adding an object to the report, select the object that you want to add, then click the band in the report where you want to place the object. 
Bands are added a little bit differently, but we will discuss that later in the training. After clicking in the page header band, we get an edit window for the object. We will add in some wording. Make sure to include a trailing space because the system variable will print directly after the text. We will also select date from the type selection drop-down box. The alignment is left and the expression is set to auto size width. Now we can move this object that we newly created to the top left corner by clicking and dragging. Notice that the blue and purple guidelines appear, showing me when a side of the object is aligned with another object in the report. The next thing we will add is a page number. We could use another system variable again to get a simple page count, but let's do something a little more complex and include the current page number as well. We are going to use an expression to achieve this. We add an expression by clicking on the E equals MC squared button and clicking in the page footer band. This brings up the expression wizard which is slightly different than the expression builder we have seen in the CSV and extract reports. We have all the same options, they just don't have picture icons we saw in other report types. We want to add in something like page number of page count. So first, let's click the ellipses, and we'll click on function. This brings up a list of all the available functions, and we can look through all the functions by clicking on the all category, but I happen to know the function we're looking for is in the other subset. Here we select the page number function. And now we have page number in our expression. Next we will add in some wording with leading and trailing spaces. And we include the plus sign between each variable. Everything written within the single quotes will be part of the variable field and will print exactly as it is written. We will also include the page count function. Make sure to include a trailing space after page. if you want to add in the word page in front of page number. And we'll validate this. And it looks fine. We'll click OK and we are back in the edit expression field. Here we will set the alignment to centered and set it to auto size width. Now we will set this object to the top of the band. We can resize the band to minimize wasted white space. And notice that once a band is selected, we have control points. These can be used to resize a band. We can also align the object vertically and horizontally with these alignment controls at the top. Next, we'll move on to the title band. Here's the default title, New Report. To change this title, double-click the object. And type in your title. In addition, we can also change the font, the style, and the size in this font toolbar. 
I'll change my font to Jordana. I'll make it 22 and blue. Now let's drag this title to the right side. Great. Next, we are going to add a logo in the title band. To add a picture file, we can click this icon that looks like it has a mountain scene. However, this should only be done the first time that an object is added in Argos. Argos is not designed to modify images, and if modification is performed on the image, it will begin to pixelate. We want to prevent this, especially since a banded report is designed to be printed. We recommend using photo manipulation software, such as Photoshop, to resize the image first, then add the image to the library of objects. We will discuss adding to the library of objects later in the training. For now, we are going to retrieve our logo from it. The icon that looks like a stack of books is used to retrieve objects from the library of objects. First, we select the title band, then we click the book icon. We will be taken by default to our user folder. If we have any access to other folders, we can select them here. Here we select the logo that we will be using. Notice that the logo is placed on the left side of our title band. We can use the alignment tool to make sure our title and logo are aligned. The first object selected is what other objects or objects will align with. We can select multiple objects using the shift key. And now the title band is complete. Now we'll work with the labels. First, we select all the labels and we can select the following by holding the shift key and clicking each object individually to add them to our selection or by holding down the control key and creating a box. We can also use the structure pane to select the objects as well. Shift and control will also work here as well. And we can set these labels to change in unison by clicking the edit button. We'll set the properties same as band, the color transparent, alignment left, and uncheck everything else. Now let's take a look at how the report is coming along. Notice the search parameters are entered because we have not left the design window. And here's our report so far. This looks better. It has a title and a logo. We can see the date and the report that was printed on. And we can also tell at the very bottom what page we're on. Now let's get to grouping by state. To group detail bands, we need a band group. Adding a band to the report is a little bit different than adding a typical object. We click on the band icon first, then we click anywhere on the report because the band will be automatically placed. We have four types of bands that can be added to the report. First, we have the single band, which is used to create the title band, page header, and summary band. We also have child band, band group, and sub detail band. After clicking on the group band, 
the properties windows pops up automatically. Now the band that is added to the report is automatically placed in the appropriate location. First, we will set the master dataset. This will default to the main dataset if no others have been created. We are also going to create a footer band to hold the state count for each state. With the band group, we need to define what we are grouping by. We can either group by a data field or by an expression. From here, we can write an expression or we can just define the database field we want to group on. Here we have a list of available fields. We want to group by state, so we'll select the state field. Now we are back at the band property window. We also want to make the band match the color we saw in our example. We also want this band to reprint on a new page. And lastly, we want to use a top frame on our header. We will make our group footer a different color to stand out from the header and give it a bottom frame. Now we have a grouping band containing a header and footer band called header1 and footer1. The first thing we should do after adding a new band is to rename it. Header1 and footer1 don't have any meaning to me, and I want something a little bit more descriptive. So I'll go ahead and click on the group header band, and then the option button to go to the object options. This brings up the options page where we can rename the object and we'll change the name to state group header. We're going to make the same change for the footer band and name it state group footer. Now let's take a look at how this looks in our report. Notice that the groups are right up next to each other. We should place a child band here to add some separation between our groups. Also, notice that each record is printing by state. This confirms that the records are grouping the way we wanted them to, but we no longer need to print this for every record. We can move the state identifier into the header. Let's go ahead and make these changes. First, we will add the child band to follow the state group footer. Select the child band and place it. This brings up the properties window. First, we need to set the parent band from the dropdown. Notice, because we have renamed the bands, it is much easier to distinguish and select the correct band. This is the only setting that needs to be changed because this band is used as a spacer and will not contain any information. Now that I have a child band under my state group footer band, we will rename the new band and set the height. Now I have a band that will always follow the state group footer band and create a space between a footer and the next header. Now we can complete the group header. First, we will expand both the group header and the detail band.
If it's too small, you can always select the band from your structure pane. And once those control points show up, you can also adjust the size here. Now we want the state to print at the top of each group as opposed to each record. However, if you try to drag this object across, it will not allow us to do so. The reason for this is that each band is essentially its own entity. We can move an object from one band to another with cut and paste. We cut the state field out of the detail band and paste it into the state group header band. Now we can place this object in the top left corner and set the size. We no longer need the state label in the column header, so let's go ahead and delete it. Now, notice that each record is only returning the name, city, and zip in our detail bands. Let's add in the street address as well. Before we add in the new field, let's make room for the new object in our detail band. I also want to change the position of my bands to display first name and last name. And if I resize my zip band, and city band, I'll have enough space for my street band. Awesome. Now I'll start by creating a label in the column header band. I'll click the A button and the column header where I want to add the street label. I'll type in street and uncheck auto size width. We align the labels. And it's good. Now we will add the database text field. Select the database text field icon and place it into the detail band. This will pop up a properties box and the data set is automatically set to Argos data. Next we'll select, select the data field. Now align the data set field with a street label. Now we can move the labels from the column header to the group header. Notice that after moving the labels, they no longer have the same formatting. This is because the labels are changing to match the band. All we need to do is adjust the font setting on the band properties to change the labels from the font color to white. Now that everything is aligned and placed correctly, we also can adjust the size of our bands. I'll also make it a little bigger so that it's easier to read. We no longer need the column header band, so we'll delete it.
And let's see how this looks. We can see that little spacer, child band. We can see the state now printing in the group header. And also the labels nice and big and formatted correctly. And the detail band printing in its own band. Now the last thing we will need to add is the total counts for the number of addresses in each state and the total number of addresses in the entire report. We'll start with the total, for which we'll need a summary band. Now we will add the single band, set it to be a summary band. And we will rename this band to summary as well. To count the total number of addresses, we will be using an expression. In the properties, we will go ahead and build the expression. We'll use a function, and the function we'll use will be count. It will count each record being returned to the report. At this point, our expression would only return the number of records. We're going to add in some wording before the number. Now we can validate this expression and confirm that it's correct. This one has an error because I used a double quote. And for text, you want to use single quotes. Note there is also a trailing space. And we can see that it displays here. Total state count space zero. On the edit window, we will set the alignment to center and check auto size width. Now we will align and center our band and set our font. Now we will add our counts for each state. We can start by copying this expression and pasting it into our group footer. And opening the expression again. First, we will need to adjust the expression. We need to change it so that it will only return an address count for one state we also want to use state abbreviations instead of their full names. We'll add a plus to separate the variables. And now we will add the state here by selecting it from the database field. Now we have a complete expression. We are back to the properties window. We'll set the alignment for the left in this expression, as well as the reset after print checkbox, as well as the auto size width. Reset after print is important because we don't want this to be continually counting. We want this to reset after every state. Now let's save and test our report.
and you can see that it prints just fine. I'll go ahead and center this horizontally, vertically. And in this last test, I'll go ahead and return all the records by setting the maximum record count to zero. And now you can see we are getting results that are very similar to the report that we saw at the beginning of the training. The next topic I want to cover is the library of objects. We added the logo object to our report by retrieving it from the library. Now I want to show you how to add objects to the library. We have created our report almost completely from scratch, but there are many elements on our report that we would probably want to use time and time again. So instead of recreating those objects every time we want to use them in a report, we can save them in the library of objects. We can save objects, bands, object groups, band groups, and even templates. First, we'll select the object. Click on the book with the plus sign icon. And here we have the library of objects. It will default to our user folder. First, we give this object a name. And the object will need a name and a folder, then it can be saved. We can create an object with multiple objects, single bands, or multiple bands. We can also create a template that may contain preset fonts and images. For a template, we recommend clearing any data that is related to a database Otherwise, it will conflict with any data added by the user in the report wizard. To create a template, click in the margin area to clear any selections. Then click Add to Library icon. Give your template a name. And click OK. Now, if we want to use this template as a basis of another report, we can. Now let's work on the last report. Cross tab. A cross tab report allows you to create a pivot table to show static analytics given within the report. Like the banded report, cross tab reports are PDF reports that give the report writer control over pivot tables using the data provided by the report query. We are going to create a cross tab that will output the student count by state. We'll start by creating a new report and naming the report appropriately. Just like in the Bander report, we will set the filter to pull results only from Pennsylvania and California. Click Apply. Then we'll go to the General tab and click Design. The edit design window for the crosstab report will feel like the banded report, however there are a few differences. On the bottom left hand side of the pane is the properties window. The object properties are located here. On the top left side we have page objects. Any objects located within the report will appear here in this section with objects grouped by locations or bands. On the right side we have the data pane that contains a list of all available fields from the report query. And up at the top we have the formatting toolbar. 
which gives us text objects and navigation tools. To get started, we are going to add three bands available for our report. Notice that the bands for this report are fixed in place and that they can be resized. We'll go ahead and add the page title, the page header, and the page footer. Notice that the page footer is stuck and they're all fixed. The cross tab should be placed outside of the band groups. The cross tab object will size according to the amount of space allowed based on the size of the bands. Using the text tool, I can add a title to my report and format it in the band. I can also change the size of that object and also the properties. I can also add some information in the page header and the page footer. We can also use the alignment tools up here at the top. And now that the report is formatted, I can create the cross tab using the cross tab icon on the left toolbar. I will place the cross tab object below the footer band. After placing the cross tab, you will be prompted with an edit window. Notice the different fields available. In the source data, we have different measures available. Under cross tab structures, we can select where we want to place the measures. The left field will create rows, the top right will create columns, and the bottom right will be used for numerical data. Down at the bottom, we can customize the cross tab by selecting a style here. And there are options on the right side that explain in more depth in the in product help. For now, we will select the appropriate measures to count the number of students in each state broken down by city. Notice that when I brought in the city data field, I was given the option to generate a subtotal. I will leave this checked so we can see how many students are each state. Now that we have an ID in the numerical data field, we will choose the appropriate calculation. Notice that whichever field is brought into the calculation must be a numeric value. In this case, we do have a numeric value, but we want to switch from sum to count. We want to make this more visually pleasing, so we can select a style and use it then to edit the editor. Looking at the cross tab, the object will auto size based on the data returned. However, we can manually change the size by selecting the entire object. By selecting the entire object, 
we can go into the object properties in the bottom left and we'll uncheck auto size. Now we can manually resize our object. We are almost done with the report. However, we want to further modify the color scheme. We can multi-select the three white cells and use the fill bucket or fill editor to select the color. We can also set conditional formatting to highlight cells. We want to highlight any cities that have more than five students and any state subtotals that are greater than or equal to 70 students. You can do that by selecting the cell, clicking this AB icon with the conditional formatting. And here we can create the expression. The value will represent whatever numeric data is in the cell. We can use greater than, less than, equal to, to set the data formatting. So for the city, I want it greater than five. Now that we have the condition set up, we can change the formatting when the condition is met. You can see a sample of this in the bottom right. And we'll do the same for the state subtotal. For this condition, I want to change the font, but keep the background in the same cell. I can disable the fill style for the condition and click into the font to modify the style. Now that our report is complete, we can run the report. Let me go ahead and make a quick change to that value in the conditional formatting. And this should work. And as we can see, any value that is greater than 5 is highlighted there. And we don't have any totals that are greater than or equal to 70. So I'll just go ahead and return a few more records so that we can see that conditional formatting for 70 down here on the second page. Notice that all the bands are in the correct positions as well. The conditional formatting is correct. And that is our crosstab report. The last item that I want to point out is the help icon at the top of the Argos client. This will launch the in-product web help to explain commonly used functions of Argos. Pressing F1 will launch this in-product help as well. And we have come to the conclusion of this video. Thank you for watching, and if you have any further questions, 
please feel free to submit a case with our help desk and we'll get to you as soon as possible. Thank you.